Hey everyone, it's Alex, and welcome to this Marvel Snap Top 10 Guide, where we're going to talk about the Top 10 Pool 2 cards for Pool 3 deck building. And today we're getting started with number 10, the Infinite. Now I know you're used to playing the Infinite from Pool 2, you know, you, you play your Sunspot, you ramp up Sunspot, you skip turn 5, and then you just play your Infinite. And I know that's great and all, but things change in Pool 3, thanks to Lockjaw and Jubilee. The Infinite sees a ton of play in these style of decks, because what you do is you get your little Wasp, you throw it on top of your Lockjaw, and hell yeah, you want to pull that six cost 20 that just comes out on turn three or four and just lands on the board and forces an opponent retreat jubilee is the same thing you play jubilee on four and you're aiming to pull that infinite out of your deck and you design your deck to land these big plays infinite's an absolutely incredible card for these rng focused decks although unreliable by their nature when you do land it it's an absolutely incredible feeling Coming in at number 9 is Warpath. What's interesting about Warpath is that when you first unlock Warpath in Pool 2, there aren't that many decks that really utilize his capabilities. And then what happens is you get into Pool 3, you get Destroyer, one of the best meta cards in the game that I feel like I'm talking about non-stop, but Destroyer essentially really makes Warpath come alive in Pool 3. And what you get is a situation where Warpath can have a guaranteed effect of getting that plus 4 power to be a 4-9, while also being protected by the Destroyer deck utilizing Armor or Professor X which are common in those builds. For that reason, you're always guaranteed to have an empty lane because Destroyer destroys. So whatever's not protected by the armor lane, which is where the Warpath is going to be, gets destroyed. And so you're going to have an empty location and the other location being occupied by your absolutely massive Destroyer. Honestly, Warpath finds new life in Pool 3 thanks to the emergence of the Destroyer deck archetype. At number 8, we have one of the most impactful cards in the game. Shang-Chi is a unique card because it provides a meta-breaking ability that can basically punch out any card over 9 power. That's very powerful, because you can play them on turn 4, sure, but you're likely to play them on turn 5 or 6 and have a completely devastating effect on your enemy's board, and they can't reliably predict you're going to have Shang-Chi. It's one of those tech cards that really just instills fear and stakes into any point in the game. Yes, you want to have the most powerful cards you can, but if you don't protect those cards and your opponent has Shang-Chi, those cards just get knocked out into oblivion. So there's this really interesting mechanic from a deck building perspective where yes, you want the most power you can. Yes, you want to run Wong and Black Panther, you want to ramp up to 64 you know uh, power but if you do that you're just one card away from getting punched out by shang chi shang chi brings balance to deck building and is for that reason is one of the best cards in pool 2 for pool 3 deck building are you guys keeping track of how often I've mentioned Destroyer and Destroy decks in the last few videos? Well, that's because cards like Bucky Barnes coming in at number 7 are truly remarkable. Yes, you have a 2-1 body that turns into a 2-6, but the key thing about Bucky Barnes that's so amazing is that when you have this little Bucky Barnes there, what you can do is in Destroyer decks, which I absolutely love, you can play it into a lane and play the Destroyer on top of the Bucky Barnes because then you destroy the Bucky Barnes, you have your 16 from Destroyer, and then you add 6 from the Winter Soldier itself, amplifying the, uh, the ability for you to run up that lane with Destroyer if so required. You have a ton of synergy with Carnage, with Deathlock, with Death itself. There are so many synergies with Bucky Barnes that it's truly remarkable. You do have to be very aware of the armor kind of uh, negation. If someone drops armor on you on the Bucky Barnes, it can feel pretty bad because you know you don't have the ability to break it with like a Killmonger in the other lane like you could do with a Nova. But Bucky Barnes is truly a remarkable card and one that sees very consistent play at all stages of Pool 3 if you're playing Destroy or Destroyer decks. Love him or hate him, Killmonger earns number 6 on this list by being one of the few cards in the game that can completely delete Delete entire deck archetypes all by itself. That's right, if you're a zoo deck player, you hate Killmonger. Of course you do, because Killmonger is going to completely ruin your game every single time. Moreover, if you're a destroy deck player yourself, you probably love Killmonger, because not only does it give you a tech advantage against zoo style decks, it also destroys sunspots, but most importantly, you can destroy that Nova from anywhere on the map and buff your entire board. You can also destroy that Hood, so you can play that Demon using that Killmonger, so you don't have to worry about that negative too. Killmonger becomes an incredibly flexible card in Pool 3, and it only can continues as you continue through your trek in pool 3 and unlock more archetypes and you'll find yourself often adding Killmonger as a spicy tech card. Coming in at number 5 we've got Sandman. Sandman's effect is really simple. Both players can only play one card. The incredible thing about that is that Sandman completely dismantles so many combo based decks that are common in pool 3. Decks like Death decks can't really do their thing. Uh, you know, Deadpool Taskmaster decks get absolutely destroyed because you can't play two cards on turn six. You have the synergy with, of course, um, you know, decks that are like zoo based can't do their thing. Uh, it absolutely dismantles Mr. Negative decks because they want to do massive, uh, you know, turn six and seven plays after playing Magic on turn five. 
Sandman completely destroys those type of combo based decks. And literally you drop Sandman on four, and if you realize that they're playing like a, uh, a Mr. Negative deck, you just snap on turn three, drop it on turn four, and then you just leave, and you get free cubes every time. Sandman is completely soul shattering for certain deck archetypes, and that is why it is one of the most consistent cards you can play in pool three, provided you of course can take advantage of it yourself. Coming in at number four is Scorpion. Seriously, how good is this card? It is such a fantastic card, and you might not even believe me when I say this, but in early beta, Scorpion was actually considered a bad card, and needed to get buffed, and now it's a 2-2 that inflicts negative one across the uh, the entire opponent hand it's damn good and you love playing it and you hate having it played against you because it's really really problematic it is such a good card and an easy add in so many decks moreover scorpion is one of those cards that like really actually gets amplified in pool three because so many people start they stop playing one and two cost cards they want those big turn three four five six combos so they start to skip turn one much more frequently and when they do that and they're holding a lot of cards in their hand and you hit them with scorpion it's all that more impactful so scorpion legitimately gets better in pool three as players start to hold their hands further and try to play deeper combos later in the game and now we're getting negatively impacted by this card you played on turn two that allows you to value trade later in the game to success now we're in the top three and we're talking about number three one of my absolute favorite cards in marvel snap jubilee jubilee is absolutely incredible a fantastic card it's a high risk card it's a four cost card pretty significant and as a four one it feels really bad but as we talked about with the infinite its ability to pull out major cards out of that deck is huge pulling an infinite is fantastic but most importantly as you get additional kind of cards as you enter pool three cards like magneto for instance you get these additional massive targets that really give you an opportunity to make wild plays with jubilee moreover you have cards like lockjaw that cost Combos incredibly with Jubilee. Jubilee just becomes this like RNG casino that actually only gets better in pool three. It's crazy. It's legit one of my favorite decks to play because it's just a ton of fun. It isn't that what it's about at the end of the day. Seriously, Jubilee is easy top three. Could have even been one, but I mean, it's not consistent, which always holds it back a little bit, but it's a card for pool two you can rely on for pool three deck building. Seriously, Iceman could have been number one has to settle for number two simply because a lot of players in pool three start to cut that one drop out of their list but if they're not cutting it out of their list you damn well guarantee that they're probably playing an ice man can you name a card that's more infuriating to see drop on the board than ice man ice man at turn one makes you want to retreat if it hits the wrong combo piece seriously Iceman is absolutely ridiculous. It is legit one of the best cards in the game, let alone from Pool 2. Just straight up one of the best cards in the game. I absolutely love Iceman, and I'm sure you do too. I mean, not when it's played against you, of course, but that's what makes it incredible. So as a Pool 2 card, if you ever need a one-drop, you often look to Iceman first. It's one of those cards that just has such an immense impact on the game, and we just finished talking about how so many decks are combo-centric. I mean, Jubilee, if it turns into a 5-cost, it becomes almost completely unplayable. So Iceman can do that. That. Iceman can disrupt combos in a way that other cards just can't. It's a very unique mechanic and a card that I believe is legitimately one of the best pool two cards for pool three deck building. And here we are, number one, the absolute best pool two card for pool three deck building. And sure enough, it's Storm. I can't get enough of talking about Storm. Storm is an absolutely insane card, legitimately one of the best cards in the game. And regardless of it being pool two, you're going to use it a lot in pool three because you get a whole ton for this. First of all, as a three cost two, you get to location correct and flood a location that you may not want there. You get to play on an addition, and when it's flooded, you get to build your deck around being able to access this flooded location where perhaps the opponent can't. Because remember, in Pool 3, you've got a combo like Wong and uh, Dr. Doom. They're going to throw Doom bots all over the place, and if you've left room where the flooded location is, then Storm's going to allow those uh, Doom bots to get right in there and secure that lane. You get so many more tools in Pool 3 to allow you to access that Storm location, to allow you to win the board in unique ways, and that's what makes Storm such a great add-on in Pool 3 decks. Thank you guys so much for watching. We got another video down below. I love Love if you watch that as well press the like button if you like the series you want to support it and thank you so much for engaging with my content you guys truly mean the world to me we'll see you in that next marvel snap video